We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, and you can check out his newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report, under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You can subscribe, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got some time over, time over the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, maybe dive into some of the uh, newsletters he's done. And you also get, folks, the webinar that he just did, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals. So check that out over the weekend, potentially, if you have some time. Teddy Kegstad, it's been a couple weeks since we, since we talked to you. We've had a lot going on in this market. Good morning, man. Good morning, Tommy. Happy Thanksgiving to you, the crew, and all the tigers and tigresses out there. You as well, man. I hope you have a great holiday. And uh, and and how's 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 the weather in beautiful, windy city of Chicago this morning, man? You know what? It's actually we're back to normal temperatures. We're hovering around the uh, upper forties, uh, around fifties. It was nice yesterday. It's gonna be nice today. The next couple of days. Oof. Not like when you last, said normal last temperatures. Week was the 20s. <laughs> I was. I didn't know if you were going to say normal temperatures and you're going to say single digits. I'm not familiar with where. Uh, I know it's a little cold out there. Well, Teddy, man, where do we start? We've had quite a couple weeks since we talked to you last. I know you've had the letter out each of those weeks, this mm -hmm. Monday included. Um, but boy, where do you want to kick things off right now? In the in the well, as I think we go, we should start with crude oil because I know you guys like that one. How Let's about do that? it. All right. Well, two days ago we had a nice spike low interesting little pattern forming on the bottom here so uh, I know everyone is super bearish and being like oh everything's happy in uh, oil land right now and I think that one of the things you can really attribute it is to two things uh, one is the fact that supply chains have dropped you know from the problems they had of over a year ago and a year ago interestingly enough um, I read an interesting statistic about um, container pricing uh, when you ship things from China or wherever around the globe because of all the backlogs, things were getting very expensive, you know, as far as shipping things. We're back to pre-pandemic pricing, supposedly, almost globally. That's a big deal because now you don't have tankers that are sitting there just burning diesel and gas everywhere, you know. So that's that's one thing that's kind of nice. Um, I still attribute it right now to it's just a correction. I think we're going to get a bounce. I think we're having a nice Thanksgiving holiday here as far as the pricing. Uh, but I wouldn't get married to these uh, these prices. I think we're going to still see the, the energy prices accelerate to the upside once we head into the wintertime. If if people are looking area for for areas steady to the downside is like pretty interesting, right? We just got to seventy five dollars, and yeah, you didn't even get down there when I got crewed back in September, and I think we hadn't seen that really since the beginning of the year. Um, right. For people looking for you know potential areas where maybe you're looking for a buy, is this kind of the area back to the the lows of September? You looking for it to trade a little lower? Where where do you see some of those areas, especially crude? We're sitting at seventy eight bucks and change. Oh, I think the mid 70s to $80 is a fantastic buying area for crude right now. So, I mean, no matter what, we haven't even begun to see winter yet. You know, I mean, we've had a, na I mean, nationally, we had a cold spell, you know, over the past two weeks. You know, they hit basically the whole country a little bit early. But we're in November, you know. I mean, I think that once you see December and January hit and we actually have snow, I mean, look at upstate New York, what's going on there, you know, and the whole Northeast. Yeah. You know, this is just – this is the big <laughs> – it's Thanksgiving and they already look like, you know, January of like 1978. They're, they're buried, you know. So um, – and I think that this is definitely going to have an impact on energy prices moving forward, you know. And we also have to got to remember that the interest rate market right now, yields are down nicely. This is a correction. The Fed still has a Fed meeting in December in a couple of weeks where they're raising a half a point. And the outlook for no matter what for the first two Fed meetings in the, um, 2023 is that they're going to at least raise a quarter point. So they're not going to stop raising rates. So that differential has the, the least yields going higher some to, to some degree and making new lows on the, on the pricing in the bond market over the next couple of months. And that's going to affect the dollar. So I think the dollar will snap back on that also. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, some of the moves we've gotten in both directions. I just had the tenure up as you were talking. I have the dollar index up now, Teddy. Um, mm -hmm. We're sitting at 106. We were just at 107 a couple days ago. But, boy, quite a pullback from 113. Again, kind of areas. Is this kind of the area potentially? If you're looking for a bounce, could it, could it trend a little bit lower? It's been quite a pullback from that 113 area. And crazy to mm -hmm. think that that's a, in November, folks. It was at 113. And you were just at a 105 handle. You're trading 106.58 right now. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you see kind of those areas for the dollar potentially if you're looking for that bounce higher? Well, the same thing, like I just said with crude, I like where the dollar index is at right now. I mean, 
if right now I think right around 105 half to 106 even in the uh, in the dollar index is where you're finding good support and that's a directional pivot area so if this is just a correction let's just say that I mean the overall trend for the dollar is still a bull the overall trend for crude oil is still a bull all these markets are still in a corrective phase I mean unless you want to say that you're gonna call a top or a bottom and say that these markets have all turned already you know so but to say that that means that you're saying that interest rate yields are going to go down and bond prices are gonna trend higher now for the next couple of months I don't see that happening I don't see how fundamentally you could have yields continue to drop over the next couple of months you know maybe oil can still can continue to trend lower but I don't see how going into the winter time when you have that demand function that's going to come in there at the very least I think that's going to be stable you know but on a currency basis for the dollar I don't see that this trend that the dollar is a bear overall going into the next month or two and the first quarter of 2023. The fundamentals just aren't there yet. Unless we see a radical change in the Fed speak come, say, uh, you know, the, the December meeting, or we see something where, it's, say, like, let's say the ECB and the Bank of Japan all of a sudden starts to, you know, do some things. And that's a key thing right there. I think the dollar might turn come April. If it's gonna if it's gonna turn, it's not gonna happen now, it's gonna happen around April. And the one reason would be is that you're gonna have a turnover in the in the Bank of Japan. When you have new leadership in the Bank of Japan, you have to wonder is this speak that they've had over the past couple of months, are they going to actually get, jump on the bandwagon? If the BOJ starts raising interest rates like the ECB and the, you know, the Bank of England and the, you know, the Bank of Australia and what have you, that would start to change things. Um, but until that differential really hits and we start to see speak like that, where you see aggressive raising from, say, Japan and the rest of the central banks and an easing on our part, then right now we're in a correction. I think we're pressing it. And I think that you'd be foolish to try and pick a, a you know, say that we're in a beginning we're in the beginning of a turned market and then and the really you know a big leg lower for the dollar I mean anything can happen but the fundamentals just really really don't look like they're, they're set up for that and we have the stock market too that's very jittery you know I wouldn't I wouldn't buy you know take too much faith on you know what's going on with the uh, the s and P's right now especially I mean I heard you talking about Tesla you know people may not be happy with the break in Tesla but a year and a half ago, I mean, any commonsensical trader or investor was saying, OK, with a P.E. ratio of like 500, how could this <laughs> stock possibly be a reality? You want to talk about FTX being that we know that that's a Ponzi scheme. They went in there with with the intention of committing fraud and defrauding people from the get go. You know, Tesla is a different story. That's a real business. Sure. But it was overinflated. Every every mutual fund bought it. Every millennial bought it. They're like, oh, yeah, got to buy Tesla. That's the new. That's the future. It was like it's like riding the Dell train of the 90s. You know, <laughs> most people don't remember Dell was like that. You know, all these companies had these yeah. waves. You know, and now all of a sudden, I mean, is Dell sexy? No. Would you buy Dell as a long term investment? Well, you might have it in your portfolio, but you're not looking for that to be any type of growth stock. You know, it's the same thing with these other markets, and it's going to hit us. Can you hang with us for the break, Teddy? Sure, sure. Perfect. If it will come back, folks, we'll talk a little bit. I just wanted to talk about the Len Yen a little bit more, and I have Tesla. Sure. We'll finish that conversation as well. Folks, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Teddy. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And folks, you got time over the long weekend. Check out Teddy's report, the Tiger Forex report. When you sign up, you gain immediate access to the recent 60-minute webinar. He did Forex strategies and fundamentals. What is behind the Tiger Forex report? So you check it out. You get the newsletter for 30 days. You can cancel with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You still get the webinar in there. And yeah, Tesla, Teddy. So real quick, it's pretty interesting because it's vastly underperformed the market, obviously, over the last two months, over this year. But boy, like you said, you put it, man. And I couldn't even believe it myself that you kicked off the year 2020 at about $28, $29, and we're sitting at $176. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously things could still be a little bit out of whack. We'll see where that stock rests, but quite the story. Back to the dollar and the yen real quick, Teddy. Sure. Um, if you're looking for a bounce to some degree right now potentially to this area, what, what would do that, Teddy? Is it just a market sentiment? Is it just that we've pulled back too much? Or is it something that you'd look for an economic data point that maybe drives some of that action? Uh, I think right now with the yen, the biggest thing is your sell-off in crude and your and your uh, slide in yield is helping the yen. I mean, especially <laughs> since we started our conversation like less than 10 minutes ago, the, the dollar's just gotten hit for like almost a half a buck versus the major wow, currencies. I, know. I mean, the, the euro just and the and the yen are both moving nicely. The, the pound just made new highs against the dollar on a daily basis, you know. Wow. So, um, 
you know, the yen, I think right now it's riding that train with uh, lower yields, you know, and I would be very, remember, we're also in a holiday market. Today's Wednesday. It's nice. Everyone's all happy. Yeah, let's sell sure. the dollar. This is great. But you know what? Volumes are going to, when they start to dry up today sometime, they're dried up until Monday in the U.S., you know? And what do you think so, about the Fed minutes at two o'clock today on a dry, you know, low volume type day? You looking for anything there? Uh, well, that actually is what scares me, is that that the interpretation of the media will be interesting on it. If the minutes come out where it pretty much goes against the narrative, I mean, you got to realize the, the, the media has been calling for rates to stop being raised for the past two weeks already, you know, saying it's over, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if these minutes come out where they're like, you know, saying, well, let's, you know, a little data here and here doesn't change our thought process. I hear you. And man. I think that's it's what they're going to say. Pretty wild how quickly the market can yeah. get ahead of itself, it seems. And we'll see if we do it again. Be Teddy, man, we appreciate the it. In the hole, my friend. <laughs> Have a great Thanksgiving, man. We'll talk to you next week. You okay. Stay tuned, Take folks. Basil Chapman, he's coming up next. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Be safe out there. Thank you.